Hi, Video Diary. Um, I am continuing the I hate to say these words, but journey, process, because I didn't want to have this journey or this process and I guess I feel it maybe could have been avoided and that's why it stings in a way unavoidable things at least with unavoidable things you can um, not be confused about how you feel about the people that are gone This is difficult because what I'm finding, and also among other people who have lost their loved ones, is a lot of mixed emotions about <clears throat> what they could have done. Some people lose their person the day they have finally kicked them out of their house. Can you imagine? So setting aside my um, rancor towards addicts, I... Uh, I just want to put out a couple of thoughts uh, about it. Today I'm wearing these beads, which are mine, and forests. <clears throat> I haven't put them on for a few weeks, cause, or months, because I've been angry. And I don't want to treat this like a spiritual, you know, experiment or journey or, you know or opportunity, or all the things that I'm sure that it is, along with being a train wreck. You know, in a train wreck, like, a lot of things go wrong and conspire to cause this large calamity. So maybe with, with your addict or my addict or whatever that you know like there are little things that we overlooked and uh, and they led to big things or patterns that we expected were expired but were still under the surface it's very much the case with my son Forrest So is it an addict, is it a drug addict's uh, fault? Can they help themselves? With some of the stories I heard recently with these very young people, you know, that were just into this for literally weeks or months, some of them, before they died. Um, and looking at their photographs of what you can tell that they were really going to be cool people already were took a little detour here and uh, and I'm not as angry at these other people as I am as I have been at my son I wonder why that is because I'm sure that they disappointed and destroyed and uh, caused I know this I know that they've caused equal amount of horror anguish disappointment in their families that that forest has caused in in mine
and I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't hate them while looking at their pictures because I could see, I could see my son, I could see how beautiful they were. So the emotion apart, like, is it an addict's fault? And if it isn't, how how are we to respond? You know, um, what are we supposed to do then if it's not somebody's fault or they can't help themselves? Is that at, at that point, does that give us a uh, license to, you know, restrain? And will that do anything? But does it give us a license to say, oh, a person's a drug addict, now we can do with them what we want because they can't help themselves. It's obviously somewhere in between a strong mixture of the individual will crossed with the way the drug is is just taking over their their desire centers you know this is all i want this is all i need i need this thing you know it fixes everything else i've heard that a lot from when i hear parents and siblings discuss the way that their drug addict used to use heroin um or opiates or alcohol uh to 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 just maintain it's so sad you know that uh that this much energy um, is is just depleted on this. But it is. Look at all the energy and the money and the resources and the and now the burgeoning industries that are going to show up rehabs you know, Mick rehabs, you're going to get a lot of that kind of stuff and they're going to, they're going to get wealthy and they're going to claim all these success stories and I don't know. Should I have said goodbye to my son 10 years ago when he was 14? Is that really when he died? That's kind of what we're saying, you know, if, 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 if there's no way to, to truly get somebody from the outside not sick, if they're sick, you know, like in medicine we can take away a disease, we're generally on, uh, you know, we're not, don't have industries concerned with what to do with, like, would you go and give yourself cancer again? If you got cured of cancer, would you actively go back and try, and not only try, but get cancer? So the way that you would with addiction. It's, it's not a clean analogy. It's not, a, it's not I don't believe, a, an accurate one for me to call it a disease. I know that it's its own version of a disease. It's it's very tricky and layered and nuanced and 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 maybe it's as simple as accepting like okay, so a drug gets in there, it makes you want it, and then you have to spend your entire life uh, dealing with that. I mean, that's what sex is for most people. Um, money can be like that. There's lots of things that, that can be the thing you chase after. I was always um, kind of intoxicated by harmonies. <clears throat> Something, you know, just, just notes together. And 
remember the first time I heard rock bands in the 70s live, I was like, I, I just, I was a teenager, young, force age, 14, 15, sneaking into clubs, listening to the most beautiful thing, beautiful thing in the world. Something, by the way, that no matter what any drug addict musician tells you, you will never attain that as a drug addict. You might have a couple of months of, you know, revelatory music, but other than that, you're you're a drag to yourself. You know, musically, you've got to have a clear, clear thing going on. My opinion. You can phone it in. If you're super, you know, super good and you're high, you could phone it in and consider that to be a success, but I'm talking about something else. I'm talking about real connection. And you can't have that with a, with a, you know, a border wall of drugs or bad health. I mean, if your health is in decline, but I'm talking about stuff that you do to yourself, you know, hangovers, hacking lungs, you know, the things that you think are normal and okay because they're legal may not necessarily be moral. I brought that up in, in another thing, like morality as viewed through like the Kantian idea that you would not will, that the only good thing is something that you can say, I want everybody to have this. Like the ability to drive, the ability to read, uh, sports, the let's say even more controversial stuff, you know, how about sword fighting? It's like, it's not that I want everybody out there fighting with swords, but I want everybody to be able to if they want to, because it's a, you know, it could be a good thing for discipline. I don't want to have a world where people fight with swords but this is this is what i think you know those type of things are like like sports and and martial arts and and um other competitive highly competitive rock and roll i think rock and roll was a purgation of war of the war uh conquering instinct you know we would we would come to your town we're gonna rock you you know it's it was uh yeah you always just say we conquered you know um So there are healthy ways to deal with our darker appetites. But if you just go right to, you know, the hardest core expression of those appetites, um, you, you, you know, you put yourself in such jeopardy. I, I, for one, have a hard time understanding how a drug can make you do something to yourself that uh, you know, I know you're blocking it out. I know you're, you're it's not going to happen to me. I'm going to make it home. I'm going to, whatever. But these people are all dying because they're doing something which we all know kills a lot of them. It's just a, a way in which your hunger overwrites your reason by twisting it to say it can't happen to me or it hasn't happened before. I don't know how many times Forrest has OD'd before. People are telling me now that, that junkies are shooting up four times a day or more to just sort of maintain themselves. And when I say junkie, I mean anybody using junk. If you smoke, you're a smoker. You know, does it matter if you're a grandma, like these people down at the corner who are smoking? It's really horrible. 
If that was my mother, like smoking a cigarette down to the filter. Anyway. That's what I mean by morality. It's like, do you, do you wish this, will this? Do you want this for everybody? You know, it's not complicated. It doesn't require supernaturalism. And in fact, it, it doesn't allow you to hide behind falsities of, of supernaturalism. You have to actually engage with an idea. Because our life, our world, is quite amazing. And the reason isn't because of nature. You know, left in our natural state, we wouldn't be so happy. We created a society of, of contracts and agreements with each other. Some are, are, are active, some are tacit. But we've done that out of common sense. Like, I'm not going to shoot you today or tomorrow. Or, you know, how about ever? And you can walk in front of my house, and I'm just going to wave, and, you know, you can't come in my house, and we have this agreement. By the way, I can't come in your house unless you invite me. I mean, everything kind of extrapolates out from these natural feelings of comfort in our species and norms. And they only get screwed up when we try to impose silly things like uh, scriptures or, or revelation. You know, things where people come out and say, oh, I've got, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's you know, it, it is our reasoning mind, minds collectively, men and women, that have put forth good ideas that would be tested over time by working them, you know, seatbelts. Do you, would you rather go back to a period of time where there, there were no seatbelts? I remember when there weren't, and it was it was like you were, you were considered like a you know a pussy if you put your seatbelt on when you went out drinking with your friends. That's when I was like 16, 17, driving around in cars, getting super high, drinking, taking baseball bats to mailboxes. Stupid shit. And I remember putting my seatbelt on and had the car roared with, you know, laughter. I don't know if I took it off, but a year later, I always wore my seatbelt. I wish forced didn't just go right to the habits and and customs of, of drug use because there's a whole seductive culture. He didn't think he was a drug addict and or or that the word junkie didn't apply to him. But I think that was why he foolishly died in such a, um, like he didn't have Narcon, he wasn't shooting up with people who knew how to like deal with that. You know, he thought he was like on another category. You know, just like some beautiful, super strong, healthy, he thought he was safe in his bedroom after playing softball into the evening, you know, I think he shot up around one in the morning, I was sitting right there, right there, because I had gotten home from, took on a paint job.
while he was dying, while he was shooting up. So he didn't think that the rules pertained to him while he was going through all the same habits of any junkie. It's so banal and just like a typical OD story, which just enrages me. And may I say, the 30 people who I had the, um, the honor to share their presence with recently, who had all lost someone like this. <laughs>